Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Aussie Flipper. My name's Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. In today's episode, I wanted to take you through my sales tracking spreadsheet. I think it's so important that everyone has a really good, easy to access place to house all of the information regarding their sales, all the financials, all the descriptions, everything that you need to know about what you're selling needs to be in one simple to easy to use place. Now I've created my own, um, it's just my own, but if it is something that you're interested uh, after having a look at this, I'm more than happy to send through an email template for you. So just add me at the Aussie Flipper and send me a direct message and just say that you've seen the video and you would like access to this template. It's for free, I don't care about, uh, I don't wanna charge anybody for this, it's just a free template that will hopefully help you um, start to track and record and, and see the growth in, in your sales journey. So I think this works pretty well for me. I'm excited to get into it and show you. Um, any questions, obviously comment below. And if you haven't liked uh, or subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so now. Uh, I put two new videos out each week on all things online reselling, as well as my what sold videos with Flip Life every single Sunday. So make sure you subscribe below, but otherwise I'm gonna get straight into this one. Hope you get some value out of it. Comment below with any questions that you have. Peace. Okay, so as you can see, the sales tracking spreadsheet that I use, it's quite involved and there's a lot of different coloring and a lot of different markers and tabs. So in this video, I really just wanted to split it up into different sections to hopefully try and describe things a little bit easier for you. Um, so the first tab that I wanted to have a look at, I'll, I'll go to the next slide. This is the, I guess, the headings part of the, of the spreadsheet. So we'll go through it together. I've got here listed items. So that's the item that you've actually gone ahead and bought. So let's just say it's a stuffed toy that we've bought. The next one is the listing date. So let's just go ahead and say it was today on the 18th. The platform, so basically what website did you use to sell the product? So let's say Facebook Marketplace the buying location as well. So I like to put in where I purchased the item just for future reference. And I do this so that I know what items, what items were bought from where and, and I guess for how, you know, for how successful they were in buying in certain areas. So let's just say op shop. The cost price as well. So let's just say we bought the stuffed toy for $2 and we sold the item for $10. That would leave a profit of $8. So that's really all of our financial side to the to the spreadsheet. The margin or, or percentage of, of margin for profit would equal the sum, so I'll always put this calculation in, equals the sum of the profit divided by the cost price, and that will give you a percent. And then I change that to percentage, percentage, and we go like that. So now it's an 80% sales profit. So I also put a postage cost in there as well. So if the item was for post, if this was just a Facebook marketplace pickup, I'll just write NA. So it's not applicable. Postage isn't an issue. The next one I'll say is dollars received. So have they actually paid for this item at the $10 price point? Let's just say that they have. So I'll put a yes in there. The sold date, let's say it's sold today on a same day sale. I would just put a note in there to say that it was the same day sale on the 18th of the 8th. And then if it was postage, I would put a tracking number in there as well so I can track any, any issues with regards to the postage fulfillment. Um, and then I'll put a note in once the tracking number's been received, would, was the item sent or was the item handed over on a Facebook Marketplace deal? For that, I would write yes as well. So they, I think, are the most important tabs to have on your sales tracking spreadsheet. And that's basically a quick input on, on how they go. So that would be the first part from a, a, a tabs headline perspective. The next one that I want to show you is what that looks like for an order. So this is an example of a bundle purchase that I, I've made off Facebook Marketplace looking to resell on Facebook Marketplace. And it's, it's an example of a sale that I had from June. Um, so on the 7th of June, I bought 10 stuffed toys the Scooby-Doo stuffed toy and two Bart Simpson stuffed toys. So all up, there were 13 stuffed toys that I purchased and I purchased them for $25. So more or less about $2.50 a toy. They were bought on Facebook Marketplace. They were resold on Facebook Marketplace. And this is a tracking understanding of the sales and the progress of the sales for this particular order. 
Once I've made a purchase somewhere, I'll always put this profit margin line in, basically to say that that was the group of, of items that I bought in that particular sale. Once an item gets sold, I'll input the sales total in. So the Scooby-Doo sold for $30 and that resulted in a profit for that single item of $27.50. The profit margin is worked out on, an, on a whole for the whole purchase and the whole sale of the product. So they slowly get manipulated as the more sales come in for that particular item purchase. The postage, there wasn't a postage cost required for the Scooby-Doo, so I just wrote NA. I received the money of $30, and that was on the 9th of the 6th. So I know that that was based on my listing date. It took two days for the sale to be made. And there was no tracking number required, and the item was sent. So the next item that we had was the Bart Simpson toys. Now, they were bought for $2.50 and they were sold for $15.80, which gave me a profit of $13.30. There was a postage cost that the buyer paid of $9.20. It sold on the 16th of the 6th, so that shows a nine-day um, sale cycle. And that was my tracking number that I used with Australia Post that I passed on to the buyer. It's a great way to keep track of the numbers. And yes, the item was sent. The color coding aspect to this um, spreadsheet is there is a orange marker for anything that's sold, which I highlight here. And then these colorings here with, the, with that would just show that the item is still left to sell. So I've got a pretty good understanding of what's still, what's still to go when I look at the big picture. The next slide that I've got is the in, in the slide in red here. So basically all of this information down here. This is my overall for the month. So it gives me a monthly snapshot. Now, what it does is the July net income of 25 is made up of adding up these figures. The July um, sold price is just adding up all my sold costs. And then there's the profit mark as well. So I made $20.80 off $45 worth of sales, which gives me a profit margin of 45%. What I like to do is I like to split it up with the net income, but then also the unsold purchase expense. So any item that I've got and actually paid for, but I haven't yet sold, I want to separate that from the net income, just to give me a bit of an understanding of what was the actual purchase price to sale price split. So the unsold purchase price so far for here is only the $20 for the 10 stuffed toys that I'm yet to sell. The next would be the monthly sales look. And the monthly sales is $5, which is these two amounts. $5 sold into $45.80, which gives me a profit when I minus the two at $40.80. So my profit margin of just the items that have sold for this particular example is an 89% profit margin. But overall, including the items that I've bought that haven't yet sold, my margin is 45%. So I really like to have a look on a monthly scale at the two sides of the coin from an overall perspective. One is the July net income and the other is minus the unsold purchase expense. Finally, the only thing I like to add on to that is the overall net income on an annual basis. So really for that, I just put another line at the very bottom and that shows what it would be over the entirety of the year. So I would add up all my monthly charges and that would show me what I'm doing for the entire year in one quick snapshot. So when we go back and we look at the big picture, this is obviously just one example of one sale, but it would expand to multiple orders of purchase. So this would be a one item, that would be a one item. This would be, say for instance, I bought 10 items, it would look like that, always marked off with the total profit and the total profit um, margin in there as well. And that would just continue all the way down, depending on how many items you buy and sell throughout the month will determine how big the spreadsheet looks like. And then you would have that down there as well. And all these figures here should add up to all of the information that you've got up above. So hopefully this gives you a good snapshot on how to do an effective um, sales tracking spreadsheet. And uh, if you've got any questions, obviously, please comment uh, below.